Flaky Cypress example level 3. Already check out the branch, install dependencies. Let's open Cypress. Okay, and doing testing, start testing, app spec, and do you think it will fail? It does fail. And notice how it fails. It fails pretty quickly. We're clicking, clicking submit. It says saved. That's all good. But then we're checking the list of people and the email and the course from the department. And it should be get it. And notice we don't find the string we're looking for. Right? We're looking for a lie element with some name, email. The department is core and the course name is get it. And for some reason, we see the git it right here in this drop down and it's missing in the person. Okay, so what's happening? Let's run the test again and maybe you'll notice what's happening right about here. Notice the change to the course. So anytime we change the department, there is some time to load the course and then you pick the course functional JavaScript, but its name appears after a delay. Okay, so this is some quirk of our application code that once you select the value in this drop down, it changes after what seems like one second, right? Or maybe two seconds. And so when you click at the submit button, right? This is the time traveling debugger allows you to inspect the app. So at the moment of submission, Notice that we don't have probably the actual department and course yet. Okay, so uh, you can see it in action. So notice when we select department and when the course, look, it says saved, but the course is not there yet. And then it changes. All right. Um, so now you know that there is something wrong, right? We are submitting the record before the course name is set. And this is why it's missing right here. If we look at our test, then it shows an anti-pattern that I see again and again and again, which is causing our problem in this example. We are getting the element. Well, that's a query. And then we're clicking on it and we're typing. So click and type are two commands. We change the application. Then we get the email input field. We click on it. We type again, two commands. We're getting the department select and we select the value or option core. We don't wait for anything, right? Even though we know that when we select a different department, it takes some time. In this case, it works, right? Because when we select the course, it actually will wait for the option get it to appear. So this particular asynchronous timeout while it loads the courses is fine because there'll be no select, there'll be no option. So, but then we don't wait for anything. We click on submit immediately. And you know that after we selected the course, it actually takes a second or two for its name to appear as selected value. So if we click before that value is there, we're getting an undefined on null property in the saved person object. So the end of pattern is Command, 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 doing all the commands until at the end you have an assertion like should be visible or should contain this text. The alternative is to alternate commands and assertions because sometimes it takes a while for the app to actually process your command and update the UI to set some saved state, to set a cookie to make maybe a network request. It takes time. So what can you do? If you know that selecting a course takes some time and you want to prevent the button to be clicked, maybe add an assertion. Should have value because this is an input element and you know the value, get it. So let's look at this test. Notice right now, select it and then it actually retried this assertion and once the assertion passed, then it found the submit and clicked on it. So let's see it again and observe a command log. Retries, 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 the course is set, then it clicks the submit. Of course, you can copy the same assertion into multiple places. 
should have value, uh, some email. This is your judgment call. These particular fields don't create a problem, right? They set a value immediately. It's only the course that was giving us a problem. So I would probably not set or add these assertions, but I would definitely use an assertion to guarantee that the command, like select a course name, finish processing before I move on to the next step. This gives your application a chance to execute your action and for the test to wait for that action to be complete before it proceeds to the next step. Another suggestion for your application code to block the submit button before everything is set and ready to go. But part of the fun of these exercises is that you're not allowed to modify the application code. You have to modify the spec only to remove the flake.